using spiritual and or philosophical sources, cite a couple passages on life and or leadership that you feel have shaped your core personality and approach to politics. Oh, boy. Woo. That, that would require some thought. I have read so much in the last 10 years. I'm trying to catch up. It's okay. Take a minute. Breathe. Take okay. Minute. Um, I, this whole thing got started for me really uh, about 10 years ago, uh, and it was, a, it was a silly thing. I'm listening to a radio show, and this it was while Carrie and Bush were running. And uh, the host of the radio show was hammering Teresa Hines Carey because she had just given a speech about American companies sending jobs overseas. So this guy finds out that the Hines company, and she's, Teresa Hines Carey has no running. She has nothing to do with the running of the Heinz company anymore, I'm sure. Anyway, she, he finds out that they have 75 uh, overseas operations, the Heinz food company. So he's, he's going after her on this. He is just hammering her. And uh, this guy calls and he claims to be a middle-level executive for the Heinz company. And he says, uh, look, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why we would have overseas operations. First of all, we're a food company. We like fresh ingredients in our product. Um, there's different tastes in very different parts of the world uh, as far as what kind of, you can't sell piccati sauce in Sweden, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, and I'm listening to this and I thought, you know, that, that makes sense to me. Because I was all, you know, well, yeah, Americans should be staying here and doing, there's a hundred reasons why a company would send their, their, their uh, jobs, there's company overseas, and uh, it's almost always never what the media says it is, and the media and the politicians all say it's because uh, they're a bunch of uh, greedy SOBs and want to make more money on the backs of some slave labor sweatshop in some foreign. No, they do it because it works for them, it's practical. Um, it's, it's, they're trying to keep their companies, they're trying to keep their companies alive, you know. You spend 20 years building up a business and you're going to watch government regulation and taxation take it apart. No, I'm sorry, I'll move it offshore. And I think that's more the reason than anything. And, and I just, it's, there's reason. So anyway, this got me started reading about economics. And I started, I went, I got a book called Basic Economics by a man named Dr. Thomas Sowell. And uh, Dr. Sowell is, uh, if he's not the smartest guy around, he's certainly uh, in the top five. And he, uh, I wrote, the, I read this book and it just changed the way I thought about things. Uh, this book is really not about economics, it's about what is and what is not. Um, I, I'm not going to go into the whole book. I would recommend the book to anybody who is interested in this subject. I know it sounds like it might be a little bit dull, but I found it, I found it fascinating. And uh, that led me to other books, another book by him. Then I started reading uh, Milton Friedman. Um, I started reading some of the older guys, um, uh, Adam Smith, who's the, uh, the father of free markets, um, uh, Frederick Hayek. Uh, these guys all... They understand how things work, how the incentives and constraints of, of uh, life, of um, the, the economic principles that, uh, that, are, that actually transcend economics. Uh, these are principles that we use in our day-to-day -day lives, and it really changed the way I look at things, everything, not just economics.